So I advertised that the uh, representation and existence theorems were, were, are useful for understanding why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, historically, they've been very useful that way. And letting you know a little bit about where they came from historically, I think we'll make that case and let you see how you might use the theorems in the same way in the future. Uh, Fama in 1970 introduced the concept of market efficiency. And we studied that on the first day. For example, running regressions of returns on variables seen at time t to see if you can forecast returns. Those were tests of uh, are markets efficient? Do, uh, do prices incorporate information? And his early and continuing antagonists held no, 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 markets are irrational. Now, what does irrational mean? Irrational must mean that the probabilities are wrong. People don't assess probabilities right, so markets don't forecast things right. Fama already proved a theorem in 1970 called the joint hypothesis theorem. He said, any test of efficiency is a joint hypothesis with a test of market, with a model of market equilibrium. Let me translate that into modern notation into the concepts we've used a couple different ways. One is, let's look at excess returns. The true model is not that excess returns are unforecastable. Zero equals E of MR means that uh, if I take the product of M and R and regress it on something, that should be unforecastable, not returns itself. To test forecastability, it's a joint test of a model of market equilibrium, something about the discount factors. They always enter together, and unless I can tell you something about the discount factors, I can't tell you anything at all. Another uh, theorem we've said, looked at, that, that gives the same sense of Fama's theorem. Prices expect the discounted payoff. And notice that the probabilities and the marginal rates of substitution always enter together. So you can't tell me the market has the probabilities wrong unless you tell me something about where do those discount factors come from? How do we connect those to data or to theory or something? A third theorem we've, we've seen that expresses Fama's joint hypothesis question is that for any set of probabilities, if there's no arbitrage, then there's a discount factor such that the price is expected discounted payoff. Whether those probabilities are right probabilities or wrong probabilities, all we need is the absence of arbitrage. We can find a discount factor to make the prices right. So the pricing representation, prices expected discounted payoff, expected discounted returns, that's easy. That holds, that holds quite generally. What matters is the model of market equilibrium. An implication of this is there's nothing you can do on asset market alone to prove rationality or irrationality or something. Sorry. You need to introduce some information about what this discount factor is if you want to argue about rationality and efficiency and so on and so forth. Second historical context, the role theorem I've mentioned quite, quite a few times. Why is that theorem so important? Why did that guide what people thought about? Well, when Roll wrote in the late 1970s, people did tests of the CAPM, expected returns are linear in betas on the market portfolio. And then, you know, they were finding results that sort of say in the 70s, yeah, sure, it works. Now, where does that come from? Well, to get to the CAPM at the time, people used a lot of assumptions. Uh, they used assumptions like quadratic utility. And, and then there's this question of what the market portfolio, it's supposed to be the wealth portfolio. Does that matter? People said, well, it's just a proxy. Don't really worry about it. Or, you know, expect the returns equals beta times lambda. That, that has all the economics in it. Well, when Roll proved that no, that representation just means that this portfolio returns on the mean variance frontier, all of a sudden we could see that the existence of a beta representation is trivial. What counts is the identity of this mean variance efficient portfolio. The idea that, that uh, this is what mattered and that the market return is just an innocuous proxy for the wealth portfolio, no, no, no. This, is, in fact, is easy. Uh, the, the identity of the portfolio return, the fact that that return should really be on the mean variance frontier, that's the entire content of the theory. Roll wrote, in fact, that he thought the cap M was untestable because we need to measure the wealth portfolio. And all we can see is this market portfolio. Who knows if the market portfolio is really on the mean variance frontier? Well, you can see the theorems guiding how we think about what we're doing, guiding the sense of argument about are markets rational or irrational? Is the cap M right or is not right? And they continue to guide us in thinking about what we do for the application that we have in hand today.